This was Elizabeth Warren's worst debate. She not only didn't mention Medicare for All a single time, but um, she decided to double down on the smear of Bernie Sanders. And I don't think that this will only hurt her chances in 2020. Like, I believe this will leave a lasting mark on her legacy. That's how bad it is, because understand what she's doing. She is burning the bridge to progressives that she tried to rebuild after she abandoned us in 2016. I'll be at this time, it's much worse because she is permanently burning that bridge. You hate to see it, but um, politics is dirty. Now, um, the moment that we all expected would happen when the moderators would ask about this happened, of course, if you didn't see the debate. And it's interesting because Elizabeth Warren ultimately chose to sidestep everything. You know, she is still maintaining that Bernie Sanders claimed that a woman couldn't win. Um, but, you know, she kind of brushes it off as if it's not a very big deal. She just simply disagreed, and he's not actually sexist. Okay, well, if that's the case, then why are we talking about it? I mean, it's likely the case that you leaked it, so clearly you thought that there would be some benefit in leaking this, some implication that maybe Bernie Sanders is sexist for allegedly telling you that a woman can't win. So, I mean, clearly it is a big deal, and the fact that you're sidestepping it tells us that you want Bernie to be damaged by this. Rather than going after the real target, Joe Biden, you're choosing to throw your friend under a bus while simultaneously preaching about unity. Absolutely disgusting. And it wasn't just bad for her because of the substance. Her performance itself, it was almost cringeworthy because she face-planted because she made a statement that was really bold and then Bernie Sanders had to correct her. You're going to see what I'm talking about. So I've said enough already. Let's watch the clip. And then I have quite a bit to say about it afterwards. CNN reported yesterday that, and Senator Sanders, Senator Warren confirmed in a statement that in 2018, you told her that you did not believe that a woman could win the election. Why did you say that? Well, as a matter of fact, I didn't say it. <laughs> uh, and I don't want to waste a whole lot of time on this because this is what Donald Trump and maybe some of the media want. Uh, anybody knows me, knows that it's incomprehensible that I would think that a woman could not be president of the United States. Go to YouTube today. There's a video of, the, of me 30 years ago talking about how a woman could become president of the United States. In 2015, I deferred, in fact, to Senator Warren. There was a movement to draft Senator Warren to run for president. And you know what? I said, stayed back. Senator Warren decided not to run, and I did, I did run afterwards. Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by three million votes. How could anybody in a million years not believe that a woman could become president of the United States? And let me be very clear. If any of the women on this stage or any of the men on this stage win the nomination, I hope that's not the case. I hope it's me. <laughs> but if they do, I will do everything in my power to make sure that they are elected in order to defeat the most dangerous president in the history of our country. So, Senator Sanders, <laughs> Senator Sanders, I do want to be clear here. You're saying that you never told Senator Warren that a woman could not win the election. That is correct. Senator Warren, what did you think when Senator Sand Sanders told you a woman could not win the election? <laughs> I disagreed. Bernie is my friend and I am not here to try to fight with Bernie. But look, this question about whether or not a woman can be president has been raised, and it's time for us to attack it head on. Um, and I think the best way to talk about who can win is by looking at people's winning record. So can a woman beat Donald Trump? Look at the men on this stage. Collectively, they have lost 10 elections. <laughs> the only people on this stage who have won every single election that they've been in are the women, Amy so and true. me. So true. And the only person on this stage who has beaten an incumbent Republican any time in the past 30 years is me. And here's what I know. 
The real danger that we face as Democrats is picking a candidate who can't pull our party together or someone who takes for granted big parts of the Democratic constituency. We need a candidate who will excite all parts of the Democratic Party, bring everyone in, and give everyone a Democrat to believe in. That's my plan, and that is why I'm going to win. Senator Klobuchar, Thanks. Senator Sanders, you can respond. Well, just to set the record straight, I defeated an incumbent Republican uh, running for Congress. When? 1990. That's how I won, beat a Republican <laughs> congressman. <laughs> Number two, of course, I, I don't think there's any debate up here. What, wasn't it 30 years ago? I beat an incumbent Republican congressman. And I said, I was the only one who's beaten an incumbent Republican in 30 years. Well, 30 years ago <laughs> was 1990, as a matter of fact. But I don't know that that's the major issue of the day. I think what the major issue of the day is, let's, does anybody in their right mind think that a woman cannot be elected president. That's enough. Nobody believes that. If Hillary Clinton got three million votes, more votes than Trump. So who believes that a woman can't win? Of course a woman can win. But the real question is, how do we beat Trump? And the only way we beat Trump is by, is by a campaign of energy and excitement and a campaign that has by far the largest voter turnout in the history of this country. And I believe that our campaign has the strongest grassroots movement. Thank we you. We have been endorsed by many grassroots Senator Warren, organizations. Senator That's Warren, why we I want to give you the final word. So I do think it's the right question, how do we beat Trump? And here's the thing. Since Donald Trump was elected, women candidates have outperformed men candidates in competitive races. And in 2018, we took back the House, we took back state houses because of women candidates and women voters. Look, don't deny that the question is there. Back in the 1960s, people asked, could a Catholic win? Back in 2008, people asked if an African American could win. In both times, the Democratic Party stepped up and said yes, got behind their candidate, and we changed America. That's who we are. So before we talk about this one more time, I just want to show you how brazen the moderators are in taking Elizabeth Warren's side over Bernie's here. Senator Sanders, I do want to be clear here. You're saying that you never told Senator Warren that a woman could not win the election. That is correct. Senator Warren, what did you think when Senator Sand Sanders told you a woman could not win the election? <laughs> they are utterly shameless. Now, I thought that Bernie Sanders handled this brilliantly. Um, he said, look, I don't want to waste a lot of time on this because this is what Donald Trump and the media want. Precisely, but it's too late because this is what Elizabeth Warren wanted. She wanted to fight and she's got it. There are reports that um, she's telling her supporters to de-escalate, but I mean, it's a little late for that, don't you think? You brought it this far. You could have attacked Joe Biden, but instead you chose to go after Bernie Sanders. Good job. Um, he also brilliantly brought up how he advocated for Warren to run back in 2016. We all remember this. He did not want to run for president. Nobody believes that he wants to be doing this right now. He tried to get Warren to run. We were all part of this nerdy draft Warren movement, myself included. But she didn't want to challenge Hillary Clinton. She was too afraid to challenge the establishment. So Bernie stepped up. Why would Bernie be dumb enough to not only tell his opponent that he doesn't think a woman can win, but also draft someone in 2016 or try to draft them when he thinks a woman can win. The entire notion that he would say this is absurd on its face. So, I mean, Bernie handled this, this um, as well as I think he could have, but Elizabeth Warren then said, look, I disagreed with him, Bernie is my friend, and I'm not here to try to fight with Bernie. Well, that's kind of what you're doing, and then at the end of the debate, when you refuse to shake his hand, I mean, is there really um, much of a friendship there left after you threw your friend under a bus, your closest friend on that stage? So she says the only person on this stage who has been an incumbent Republican in the past 30 years is me. Now, this moment is going to leave a lasting mark because not only is it incorrect, but her response to learning that she's wrong 
was incredibly cringeworthy. And when Bernie Sanders corrected her, she looked like the meme of the lady doing math in her head. Like, it was that bad. It was just, it was utterly embarrassing for her. And, you know, Bernie Sanders corrected her. He said, no, actually, I beat a Republican 30 years ago in 1990. It's actually 29 years, technically. It's not officially 30 years yet, but I digress. But he tried to correct her, and then she still wasn't, like, believing him. I mean, I think I literally facepalmed when I was watching this play out. It was that bad for her. It was embarrassing. I mean, to be wrong and then not believe that you're wrong. Unreal. And as Owen Higgins pointed out, Elizabeth Warren was a Republican when Bernie Sanders beat a Republican. So I just want you to stop and think about this. Imagine Elizabeth Warren on a debate stage against Donald Trump. Bernie Sanders was being incredibly kind to her. He was handling her with kid gloves. And she still managed to embarrass herself. Bernie didn't own her. That was a self-own. He just said, look, no, actually, I did win an election against the Republican in the last 30 years. And she didn't believe him. She couldn't do the simple math, probably because she was flustered. I don't know that I could do that in the moment as well. But I mean, let it go. But she didn't. And in spite of how badly that went for her, guess what she did? She took to Twitter to brag about the, the attack that she lobbed against Bernie Sanders, not once when she tweeted out that video, but twice when she then reiterated the same sentiment. Elizabeth Warren has the worst political instincts ever. Ever. I don't know what she's trying to do, but I mean, okay, she's staking out a claim on the establishment side. Like, she tried to basically have one foot in the progressive camp and one foot in the establishment's camp. But when you take into account this attack and also the fact that she doesn't support Medicare for All anymore... She's chosen a side. It's the establishment. And this shouldn't be surprising to anyone who's been paying attention. She already chose the establishment over progressives. But nonetheless, I think that progressives believe in forgiveness. So we kind of skeptically tried to give her another chance while still supporting Bernie Sanders because maybe she would have been the VP. But after this, don't think that's going to happen. I think that she permanently damaged her reputation among progressives. And what was a genuine friendship with Bernie Sanders because she was trying to be an opportunist and wanted to smear him. It's, it's honestly sad. It really is sad. Now, she says, ironically, so the real danger that we face as Democrats is picking a candidate who can't pull our party together or someone who takes for granted big parts of the Democratic constituency. Why don't you look in the mirror before saying something like that? Because you're taking for, taking for granted all of the progressives as you throw Bernie Sanders, your friend, under a bus. And she claimed the other day that Bernie Sanders, or implied that Bernie Sanders, was being divisive by attacking her, by suggesting um, that her voters are affluent and well-educated, even though that didn't come down from the campaign officially. Elizabeth Warren has no self-awareness. She has the worst political instincts ever. And... I really feel like this is going to do permanent damage to her legacy. It's sad. So overall, you know, she sidestepped the entire implication that Bernie Sanders is sexist, didn't offer us any additional details about that private exchange, didn't give us any more context, didn't even, you know, entertain the possibility that maybe she perhaps possibly misconstrued what he said. She could have explained, well, you know, he said what I thought was that a woman couldn't win? I mean, we got none of that. She just sidestepped it. And then after she said that, um, then what do the moderators do? They pivot to Amy Klobuchar. Why? You're not going to immediately give Bernie Sanders the chance to defend himself? Really? Now, finally, CNN, of course, gave Elizabeth Warren the last word here because they love Elizabeth Warren quite a bit and they were obviously trying to prop her up the most during this debate. And, you know, she talked about how female candidates have recently outperformed the male candidates. And here's the thing. She doesn't realize that she's preaching to the choir. She's assuming that that 2016 Bernie bro stereotype is in fact true, that we're all sexist Bernie bros and we hate women. No, you're preaching to the choir. We're all incredibly energized and inspired by 
all of these women across the country who are stepping up to run for Congress and challenging Republicans and beating Republicans. I've interviewed uh, more than a dozen female candidates on my show. In fact, out of the almost 30 congressional candidates I've interviewed, I think at least half of them, possibly more of them, have been women. So you're preaching to the choir. We believe in women. We are glad that so many women are running for Congress and are successful. The most popular progressives are women. AOC, Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, Pramila Jayapal. So the fact that you're choosing to make it seem as if we're against women by sidestepping this and just touting the benefits of women, yes, we know. But we want you to explain to us whether or not you truly believe Bernie Sanders is sexist, because that's the implication. That's certainly what it seems like she's priming us to believe. She's not directly saying that Bernie Sanders is sexist. She didn't explicitly say that. But she's priming us to believe that. She's trying to get us to think that he's sexist without saying it. So, I mean, I was uh, admittedly naive enough to maybe, maybe think there's a small chance that her and Bernie Sanders would be able to um, come together, put this aside, work out some type of solution or mutual agreement that they kind of uh, disagreed on the way that this meeting took place. I don't know, but that didn't happen and it fanned the flames and she made matters worse. So what else can you say about this? Elizabeth Warren time and again has been a colossal disappointment to progressives. She uh, refused to run in 2016 when we desperately wanted her to, when we were practically begging her to. Okay, that's her choice. But Bernie Sanders stepped up. She could have at least been there for us in the form of endorsing Bernie, helping him out in Massachusetts. She didn't. Um, we asked her to speak out on behalf of the Standing Rock protesters who were being brutalized by militarized police. She remained silent while benefiting from <laughs> this lie that she's Native American for decades. And now, at a time when she should, in theory, be Bernie's biggest ally on that debate stage, she is doing him the worst. It's sad. But this is what she wanted. All right. Uh, you made your bed, Liz. Lie in it. Bridge burnt permanently.